to talk well, about uh, a specific excuse me sir um, excuse me we'll just let the city attorney address it okay why would you like to your, yes your honor the memo that he's referencing was an issue that was brought to me from the community development and the their process of doing a variance and whether they could proceed that way um, during my research figured that uh, that was probably not the appropriate way and so I advised uh, community development to proceed with another map um, another way to address the issue and then that's where they came up with the potential for the um, ordinance where they drafted the ordinance and that's what's before you today the memo that he's references was another issue that helped bring it to this position but that that memo is not relevant to this issue before you so today. the so the uh, relevance the issue that he brought forward to us or through that demo has nothing to do with the circumstance tonight is that what you're saying to us well it was a different issue was it talking about a variance process okay but, but that has that's not what we're talking that's about we're here talking we're about talking about okay okay oh uh, hang on one second sir you got a question on this is, tom it will or, so we have a, yeah. a yeah, letter it, in our packet is that what's being referenced well, no, it's not. That was from a different. That was from planning and zoning. But if he wants to talk about the difference between developed and undeveloped lots, you know, that would be appropriate. As long as it's not a specific not a specific lot. Specific. He's just okay. talking about the characteristics okay. of developed and undeveloped lots. Continue, uh, sir. Okay, there was a lot in town that met the requirement of undeveloped lots and and did would be one of the lots that were in your 30 sec 36 list okay I won't specify which one that that is uh, it it appears as a, a lot that was on a an addition to the city uh, along with other lots uh, <coughs> This particular lot, uh, along with the other lots, were uh, in a in a uh, plat that was approved by the city in 1927. Uh, there were other lots. On this same that that only had access to an alley, and and uh, uh, one of those lots uh, adjacent to the one specific one was was uh, uh, granted, or or the owner of the lot deeded uh, a right of. 40 foot of right of way to an alleyway that now became a a street okay. subsequently the rest of that alleyway was deeded or uh, received easements to become a street this was after the plat was approved by the city so if a lot was in a plat, it doesn't necessarily mean that it was a developer lot because 25 years later, uh, the only lots that were uh, not <coughs> not uh, not uh, buildable were those that had not had city right away added to the the alleyway so what I'm saying is that that if I can just get a second here the only lots in which no additional property were provided to the street access by their owners were two of the were lots that that uh, I'm, I'm sorry I need to back up a minute
all of the lots on this alleyway that had city right of way uh, added to it were developed. The only ones that weren't were the two that did not get the city right away. What I'm saying is platting is not the same as being approved for building. The proof meant for building for most of the lots were done 25 years later. In fact, the lots that were left out for whatever reason have never been approved for building. <coughs> My point is that it's primarily the responsibility of the owners of these lots to provide access, uh, street access. Uh, it's not just because they are on a plat. Platting has changed from 1927. Now if you have a plat, all the I's are dotted. <coughs> then, And there will never be another lot added to the two lots that are <coughs> identified by this, this uh, uh, ordinance. Sir, could you go ahead and kind of wrap it up so we can move on here? I think we get. The, I think we pretty well get your point, sure. and I don't know um, if talking any more about it's going to make it any clearer for the counselors up here. Well, let so, me let me conclude okay. this statement. <coughs> if you if you uh, leave the the lots that are unimproved in the, as subject lots to this development then then approval of, of this resolution is is uh, Sorry, I'm embarrassed. <coughs> I find it very difficult to present general topics when, and, and it's the only way I can describe a significant collection of the lots that you have identified. If I talk about two of the specific lots, these are all the lots in that c category of undivided. Uh, you, if you pass this ordinance with those lots included in here, there's no way that there will be any public input to the impacts that are made when uh, these lots are are uh, come before the the city. Uh, all the decisions will be made internally and not externally. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay. Additional testimony. Good evening. I'm Christine Moffitt, a long-term resident of Moscow. I live at 419 Sunset Drive, and I own property um, at, on Residence Street, uh, 725 and 723. 
I, I find similarly to what Mr. Potratz brought out today is that you're putting us in a very difficult decision uh, to be able to provide you adequate testimony about an issue that concerns two lots that are in a unique situation that are very different from the unique situation that you have with rebuilding existing properties throughout the city. And so I stand in strong opposition to your including undeveloped lots that could be developed in a proper format with proper road development and public input, which is really the intent of changing from a variance to um, the issue of special conditions. And if you read your packet carefully, and I know there's 68 pages there, and there's more to this story because some of you might even remember that I was here a couple of years ago when we were talking about potential development of an area in this town that never even had a formal road. There is no official paved road up in this area where these two lots are. It was created by grindings. We were talking about grindings tonight. And then actually the platting was done by the Otnes family that was also mentioned today. So it's kind of a long story to tell you. I would plead with you to not accept what the city staff has recommended to combine developed and undeveloped lots into one fell swoop solution. I totally support the concept of development, but new development should be regulated, should have to conform to existing standards, and there are solutions that can be made. And if you pass this, there's, there's <clears throat> a, a lot of congestion in the area of impact. And we were at a hearing uh, and the rebuttal to the hearing with P&Z where they literally said all you're going to have, all the developer needs to do with an undeveloped lot, if it's zoned for R3, that person can put the maximum allowances for R3 without having to provide road access, without having to consider the, the elements that are part of Idaho code, which was pa passed two years ago, that asks for that all development be considered in this, <clears throat> the concept of a special uses where you minimize the impact on other developments, you control the timing, you assure that, that the provisions for on-site and off-site facilities are adequate. That's all we're asking that you do is separate these two, ins two instances, do not solve it with one fell swoop, and I also plead that you consider this and don't waive your responsibility of three reading readings of this ordinance tonight, that you take the time to consider and read these packets and perhaps might discuss with some of us that have done a tremendous amount of research for two years on this particular part of town. So with that, I would plead for you to not um, approve this, consider carefully, and do not approve it on your first reading because you have that prerogative as city council members. Thank you. Are there any questions? I think we're going to kind of ask for more testimony. Thank you. Additional testimony, opposed, or general testimony? <clears throat> Sir, may I read yes. Usually I do not, but what I will do um, is rather than have you contradict what these other folks are saying, I think what I'm going to do is have, let the council ask questions and then we'll refer to our city attorney and community development director and planner. Questions from the council that you may want to address before I close the public hearing? I, I, I have a question of, of Bill Belknap, but I'm not sure whether it should be done within the public hearing or not. Well, we can close it if you do not have questions concerning. <coughs> to my suggestion, if you are done 
taking, taking public testimony that you close it and then begin your deliberation. Public hearing is closed. Go ahead, Walter.